So let's talk about all the use cases for Azure Files. Normally they have a spiffy graphic here, um, but because Azure Files has so much utility, uh, all I have room for is a bunch of text, uh, but we do need to learn it all because it is such an important service. So the first use case is that it can serve as a replacement or supplement uh, for your on-premise file servers, network attached storage, your NAS devices. If you're performing a lift and shift, and a lift and shift is when you're moving data in the cloud, we'll describe it in a second here. Uh, you can use um, uh, Azure Files for that. And so we actually have two different kinds of lifts we can do that uh, Azure defines. We have a classic lift and a hybrid lift. So in a, in a lift and shift, this means when you you move workloads without re-architecting. So the idea is like you used to use on-premise, you want to use Azure, uh, but you're trying to keep things as, as similar as you can. Very commonly, uh, lift and shifts for uh, um, uh, from on-premise to the cloud will just be taking your virtual machines and then just uh, copying and then bringing them onto the cloud with nothing else, right? Uh, but anyway, in the case here for storage, we have the classic lift. This is where both the application and its data are moved to Azure. And then in a hybrid lift, this is where the application data is moved from uh, moved to Azure Files and the application continues to run on premise. Uh, so clearly classic lift is bring everything over. Hybrid lift is like leave the application behind. Uh, another reason you'd want to be using Azure Files is that it's going to simplify your cloud deployment. So imagine you have shared application settings. So you have multiple virtual machines and workstations, and they all rely on the same configuration files. You can just go ahead and mount that drive and share that information. Uh, if you're doing DOS diagnostic tests, so let's say you have a bunch of virtual machines and they're logging uh, to those machines, uh, and you want a developer to go in and quickly debug them. Maybe there's a reason why you don't want to use a third-party provider because of compliance or security reasons. But the idea is that uh, all these VMs can just log uh, to the um, uh, to the uh, file share, and so now you have centralized logs across many machines. Uh, another uh, uh, use case is that you need to quickly share development tools. So you could put all your tools onto the onto the drive, and so the developer would mount it, and now they can set up a local environment a lot faster. Uh, when we're talking about containerization, we have a few options here. So if you are using containers, generally by uh, default, containers are stateless, and so you need to persist volume somehow. And so that's what you're going to do. You're going to be using Azure Files to do that. Um, and also another question is why would you why would you use Azure Files instead of setting up your own file share server because that's definitely an option that you can do and the reason why is that shared access so it already has the standard protocols so you don't have to configure them it's already uh, baked into uh, the service it's fully managed uh, and this is something that uh, I should uh, I don't think should be underlooked but because it's very difficult to um, scale a file server so it they will uh, apply patches for it and it will just automatically um, scale. Another thing is that it already has a lot of scripting and tooling built in. So if you want to use the Azure API or PowerShell, you can automate the management and creation of files and things like that. And it's also extremely, extremely uh, resilient. So uh, you can be sure that it's going to stay remain running. So there's a lot of use cases there, but definitely worth our time. So there you go.